welcome back to Jim Bob's Garden. Today we're going to talk about potatoes. Now, uh, we planted potatoes in here, and I did get some potatoes, not a lot. Um, I think I didn't get them enough water. Um, uh, we're going to look into that and try and figure that out as we go along. But one of the things we did have a problem with is if you can see right there, there's holes in my potatoes. And in fact, if you look over here and all around there, there's these holes. Now, what I'm understanding is that these are actually from something called wireworms. And wireworms are very common in patches that used to be grass and they've been converted into gardens. A um, couple of things you can do about wireworms from what I can read is basically you can grind up the soil, which I have done. I took my rototiller through here and I wanted to kind of do that anyway, kind of grind in some of the uh, compost and mulch I put on there. Um, and then the other thing you can do is plant beans. Uh, try and grow a crop of beans in there. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to plant some beans and I think I'm going to plant some spinach too, just because. But we're going to plant uh, three rows of beans here and hopefully that will cure, at least partially, my wireworm problem. All right, so with that, let me get started. And of course, I got my trusty hoe. I try not to go anywhere without my hoe. All right, just dig a little furrow here around my watermelon plant. Those watermelons, by the way, are volunteer. They, uh, we had some watermelons that didn't do well last year. And we planted them, or we didn't plant them, we just threw them in the, the garden to compost down. And lo and behold, this year we got tons of watermelons volunteering. Kind of cool. Now I want these pretty dense. If we get beans, that'll be great. But that's really not the purpose of these so much as it is to try and fix the soil. Now beans are a great nitrogen fixer. Any kind of legumes, whether it's... Uh, Beans, peas, um, there's actually a pigeon pea tree, which I have also grown. i got several of those coming in, um, which are also nitrogen fixers. And like I said, now, I grew up in Kansas, and one of the things a lot of farmers will do back home, at least to my knowledge, is they will, uh, in the off-season, they'll plant soybeans in the field to help them uh, fertilize the soil with some nitrogen from a natural source. All right, so we're going to do that. Now, beans tend to be a fairly large plant. Um, and I've got these, like I said, planted pretty close together, primarily because I want a lot of density, mostly for the nitrogen, not so much for the crop. All right, and if you can look here, I'm planting pinto beans. Um, these are uh, from the dollar store. That's all they are, just... Regular old pinto beans. So far, I planted a bunch of them, and they've all grown very well. Uh, we'll see how it works out once again. I'm not so worried about the food production this year as I am about the um, about the actual fertilization of the soil. So, either way. Now, another thing you'll notice: this dirt has got very dry. I don't know if you can see it, but my dirt is so dry in through here. Put them a little further apart. Probably should. Let's redo this. Go about a foot apart. This last time I planted these, every single one of them came up. So now, when you're guesstimating a foot, believe it or not, a foot works <laughs> for most, for the most part, unless you got extraordinarily long feet. That's why it's called a foot. Right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and do an alternating pattern here. Basically, so I've got one bean here and then the other bean here in an alternating foot wide pattern approximately. Reason being, well, it should allow me to have more density of foliage. Um, without causing a lot of binding up of uh, leaves and such. Basically a circle theory here. Right. Once again, we'll alternate. 
Now, they should be buried, I think, about an inch deep, inch and a half thereabouts. This is very loose soil, so it shouldn't be a problem. Ah, just fell. That would be a funny video if I face planted in the dirt, wouldn't it, Bree? And again, as usual, my daughter Brianna is my cameraman, or camera woman, as the case may be. Oh, look at that, Bree. We got an itty bitty, ah, itty bitty tomato. Oh, tomato. An itty bitty potato, rather. Ah. So. And let's see, I've got a, I'll use my hoe, I guess. By the way, my hoe is my best friend. If you haven't seen my video on how to use a hoe and how to take care of a hoe, please take a look at it. I uh, thoroughly enjoyed making it. Hopefully you will enjoy it as much watching it as I did making it. And then just basically cover everything back over. Like I've told a lot of other people, gardening um, is one of the oldest uh, occupations, or farming, as the case may be. There's another tiny potato. Um, and it's not rocket science. For the most part, you take seeds, you throw them in the ground, and you make sure they get some water. If you don't have a lot of rain, you want to irrigate get plenty of rain, you don't need to irrigate. And then again, if you have a good soil set up with a good batch of mulch, um, it should keep itself moist if you get enough rain. But here lately, here in northeast Florida, and it's what, May 8th or so, our rainfall has been very low, very minimal. Um, so forced to water a bit more. And I will tell you, I had a very serious layer of mulch over this garden. And when I was digging this up, I noticed that a lot of it was very dry deep down. So apparently, I did not soak it as much as I should have. It's the only thing I can think of. But compost is great, as is mulch. But depending on what you use for mulch and compost, you got to think about, is the water actually getting all the way down into the dirt? Um, what I found, I had a pretty serious layer, like I said, of uh, grass clippings and various other things, and leaves and such. And uh, I think that's why everything was dry and why the potatoes didn't perform as well, is because not enough of the water got down into the dirt itself. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to water it all in real good. Before I put the, the uh, compost and mulch over the top. All right, now let's do this little row here. Or a little bit of spinach. I'm kind of experimenting with the spinach, kind of like we did with the other beans and spinach that I planted. Hopefully, what's going to happen, the spinach will bolt once it gets hot. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to do this with, uh, with shade and moisture to try and keep my spinach lasting longer. Uh, so far, spinach has been a pretty rough thing this year. All right, hang on one second. Let me go get my spinach seeds. You can pause it if you want. Or keep rolling. It doesn't matter. We got my seeds, Bree. All right. Once again, I've got my spinach seeds, which are the Olympia hybrids. Um, kind of experiment with different seeds. It's one thing to get spinach to grow, but it's also another thing, hopefully, I'll be able to get some seeds off of that crop so that I won't have to keep buying seeds year after year. Right. Let me plant these. Oh, man, I keep kicking my beans over, Bree. What the heck? Um, 
Now, these are probably not the most um, permaculture seeds, and nor is this necessarily the permaculture way of doing business. Um, I'm trying to do it somewhat sustainable. I'm not a permaculture graduate, nor am I devoted to permaculture, though I am going to try and use some of their principles and a lot of the things that I do to enable sustainability and basically ongoing harvest and so on. So, and I do read a lot about it, but there's a lot of things that I have not done that need to be done if you're going to do true permaculture, and I'm not sure if I'm going to. My idea is to try and do it as common sense as possible and still get a good harvest um, with minimal expenditure. Because I'm cheap. All right, we'll cover that back up. Like one of the things I should be doing is wearing a hat. Really surprised nobody's commented on my ball spot so far. Except for that. Don't laugh at old people. Someday it's going to be you. Right there. All right. So now everything's planted. With that, I'm going to soak it in real good. All right, go ahead and pause it. i got to get some stuff set up. All right, so then we're going to throw a little water on it. Now, like I said, with this dirt here, the sand that we have here, you got to try and get it moistened first all around. And then give it a second to kind of soak in. Otherwise, what will happen, you'll start to beat up the dirt. Not beat up the dirt, bead up the dirt. And then you basically will only get water where it runs into the ground in certain spots instead of everywhere. And my poor... Watermelon vine ain't liking this a whole lot. But we'll give it plenty to drink, it should be fine. Now, can you see the puddles, Bree? Right. I'm going to fill this up, and I want to show you show you what happens in Florida if I can get it full. Now, I remember back home we had clay in the soil, and so if you made a nice little mud hole like this. It would be mud for days after. I see I'm starting to beat everything up again. Alright, watch that stuff soak in, man. It won't take no time at all, it'll be gone. Yeah, I didn't let it soak long enough. I'm already starting to beat up in certain spots. So we're going to let that soak for a minute. But I don't know if you can see it on the video so much, but that water level is going down with a quickness. Where, like I said, back home in Kansas, I'd have had a nice little puddle for a little while. Now that's going to be gone in minutes or less. The only reason it's taking so long is because the dirt is so dry. All right, let me go get some mulch compost.
still rolling? All right, so I'm going to check something here. I'm trying to pick a spot where I didn't plant. All right, can you bring the camera over? All right, get a close up of that. So, despite all that water, that's how deep the water goes maybe half an inch. All right, so we're going to have to soak this sucker down real good. You know, because we haven't had any rain here in a while. And I think that's part of the problem. It's just not penetrating far enough because we're not watering heavy enough. Um, which kind of sucks. I really don't want to spend that kind of money on water. But we're going to just have to start doing it in spot locations. I say we're supposed to get some rain sometime this week, but I don't know. You know, where normally spring is your time for a lot of rain, we haven't gotten squat this year, or last year for that matter. And it may be that global warming is part of the problem. I don't know. I will tell you that... Uh, Rain has been pretty sparse here recently. I'm thinking that might have been why my potatoes died as soon as they did. But that's the thing about gardening. you got to live and learn. Experiment. And again, this is why you keep a notebook. So you can write some of this stuff down and say, you know, okay, well, last year this happened. Especially when you start getting old like me, it's easy to forget what exactly went on last year. So. One of the things people don't realize, when it rains, it pours water down everywhere. Every square inch of ground, for the most part, gets a good soaking. And so people would be like, you know, it rained for half an hour, and I sprinkled for half an hour. It should be the same, right? Yeah, no, because your sprinkler only hits one spot at a time. We don't have a sprinkler yet that's going to basically cover every square inch of ground. So it's a intermittent sprinkler. So, that's one of the reasons why rain is so effective, whereas watering with regular groundwater is not. Now, one of the things you can do is something called flood irrigation or uh, drip irrigation, which tends to be more successful as more of it goes into the actual ground itself. But you still have to look at, you know, if you're really trying to penetrate into the dirt, you're still not going to be covering 100% of the ground 100% of the time. You really got to think about how much you're putting down and where it's all going. 
which is, I think, probably our mistake, because we didn't get enough rain. I didn't really soak this like it should have. Really need some rain, so if you got some, anybody out there got some friends upstairs, talk to them and explain our need, if you would. Because here in Florida, if we don't get rain in the spring, we get fires in the summer. Remember, the year my youngest was born, we first moved here in 90, 98, like the whole area was on fire. It's been a really, really dry spring and winter. The whole area was on fire. We moved into a house. The air conditioner broke. My wife was, um, what, about eight months pregnant. Happy times. Happy, happy times. You want to have fun, move a pregnant woman into a house with no air conditioner in the summertime in Florida. That's exciting times. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think I got it soaked pretty well. I'm going to throw some more on it once I get the motion. Now, this is a bunch of compost and mulch that I had. What the heck is that? Oh, how did this sponge get in there? Um, but this is what I've been working on drawing back here with my compost bin. Uh, it probably hasn't set quite long enough to be really good compost as such, but it'll work as a combination of compost and mulch. All right. Mostly right now I'm looking for a layer of coverage. So. Once again, I do love my wagon. This thing makes my life so much easier. Now, of course, I don't have any chickens because I live in a homeowners association. I wish I had chickens. Um, yeah, I don't have any chickens to, to claw this all up or eat the bugs out of it. So basically, I got to kind of just rely on it to rot down. Uh, but it should work. It should do the trick. It's rotted things, and that's a beautiful thing. I'm going to find my rake. Now, Compost versus mulch. It has been my experience that if you put just straight up mulch, like leaves or um, straw, straw isn't as bad, but certain types of mulch, what you can find is that they basically form a layer. All right, And if the layer is too thick, your plants can't get through it. I'm hoping to not do that with this. But now on the flip side of that, I will tell you that beans are very strong plants. Um, and they tend to do a really good job of getting through just about anything. You can see in here I've got coffee filters, eggshells. We're really trying to get to where we, we don't throw hardly anything away. If it can go into our compost bin, we try and put it in there. And you notice I'm trying to leave it a little more sparse on the spinach side. Just make sure I get something coming up. One thing about plants, always keep in mind that plants get their food from sunlight and their, well, they get food from the ground, but basically the energy comes from sunlight to make fruits and so on. So if you cover them with mulch, you're probably going to kill them. Just saying. All right, I'm going to soak that down real well. And that is the best I know how 
multiplying a bunch of beans and spinach. Well, I can do this after after we get done talking here. But hopefully this will solve my problem with the wireworms and also help fertilize the soil. You can never really go wrong planting beans. Even if they don't grow up and make a lot of beans, you can always chop them down and use them as leave in place compost. So or I'm sorry, mulch. Um, bottom line is that's how I planted it, and we will see how it all turns out. Once again, you know, my garden's pretty much an experiment, one right after another. And we're learning as we go along. You got suggestions or ideas? Uh, if you got a better way of getting rid of wireworms, for example, that does not involve chemicals, please feel free to give me a call and let me know. I'm not a call, but you know, make a comment. Uh, otherwise, share it with your friends. Uh, you know, subscribe to our channel if you don't mind. We would really appreciate it, and that's the only way we can get paid. Uh, not that I really want to get paid so much as I, I want to be able to buy a little better equipment. We'll make a video here soon about the, the sad state of equipment we have been dealing with. Otherwise, thank you for stopping by. Uh, we appreciate your time, and come back and see us at Jim Bob's Garden.